All right, welcome back everybody to another Classics album review. And this one kind of goes without saying. <laughs> this is one of those albums where I feel like everything that needs to be said about this album has already been said. So I'm not quite sure why I'm adding my own voice to it, but eh, what am I gonna do, right? Let's, let's talk about it. Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. So what other iconic album from the 70s can really be measured by Dark Side of the Moon? Like Dark Side of the Moon is so ingrained in our cultural zeitgeist that I don't know what a world would be like without it. You know, there's so much of the production side of things that were revolutionized with Dark Side of the Moon. Um, it was kind of the pinnacle and the high point for progressive rock and art rock as a whole. And it showcased that, you know, the experimentation and the concept album lived on and could produce one of the best pieces of art Ever. I remember when I first really, really got into this album because I I don't remember when I first heard this record. You know, this is one of those records where I literally do not remember the first time I sat down and listened to this record. I always knew about this record. It was always on when I was a kid. My dad listened to it constantly. It's one of his favorite records. So I don't remember really sitting down and listening to it, but I do remember really getting into it when I was in high school. Uh, I remember having the sweatshirt uh, that was the Dark Side of the Moon prism, and I wore that thing almost to shreds. Like, I still have it, and it's it's practically in tatters uh, to the point where, you know, I had a nickname of Pink Floyd growing, like, when I was in high school because I wore that thing so much. So, yeah, it had a really big impact in me. Um, I love this album. I have memorized this album. But it's also one of those albums that I've listened to so much and I know so well that I don't really need to listen to it ever again. You know, it's one of those albums that I've heard so often that I've memorized it and it's like, well, I don't really need to listen to it again. Um, so it'll be interesting in a couple of months when Roger Waters puts out his version of the album. You know, he's doing a Taylor Swift, Taylor's version of Dark Side of the Moon, or I guess Roger's version of Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, and that first single of Money was just god awful. Um, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what the rest of the album is going to be like if it's going to be as bad. Before I dive into the music, because I will talk a little bit about the music, I, I like to talk about the actual concept of this record because much like most of Pink Floyd and Roger Waters' concept albums, I always feel as though the concept is very, very strong, but it never really sticks the landing. And outside of animals, I feel like this is probably the strongest concept and the closest that they've actually gone to hitting the mark, you know, uh, and the dark side of the moon really is life and the human experience within life, like what dictates life, what drives people to do the things that they do, whether that be the fear of death, which basically encompasses the entire first side of the record, which is looking back upon your own life and grieving not getting started, you know, and that's really the breathe and on the run where, you know, there's some really deep poetics within it. Soon I find that 10 years has got me by. I miss the starting gun. Um, I, I know I butchered it, but, um, you know, that kind of that essence, you know, the whole passage of time and how relative time is and how quickly it slips you by. Uh, and then it, it, you know, brings into this grand crescendo of great gig in the sky, which really is this concept of death. And you hear these spoken words throughout the album. And when we get to this point, it's, well, why should I be afraid of dying? Everybody dies. You know, it's, you got to go sometime. And later on in the album, you hear, just give them a short shock uh, and that will do it. Just quick, easy, painless, just get it done and over with kind of an idea. For some people that, that um, presence of death, that, um, that final finish line is the motivating factor of their own life. It's what keeps them going. It's what keeps them motivated. Uh, and for others, it's not wanting to uh, waste away their time. They don't want to uh, waste any opportunity. Um, either they felt like they've already wasted their opportunity, so they're not going to allow that to happen again, or some kind of variation of there. Uh, and so I love the fact that that takes up pretty much the entire first half of the album. 
Uh, the second half of the album is more of the distorted areas that motivate individuals that to do whatever they want. And the big track on this one is money. The root of all evil, you know, it's the corrupted kind of thing. Uh, and then with us and them, it's this comparison. It's trying to be better than other individuals. It's they're wrong and we're right. And that's what motivates us to do what needs to be done. You know, it's, it's to prove them wrong and to prove us right. And again, it's this distortion of what drives people People to do whatever they want. And then finally, the last two tracks of Brain Damage and Eclipse, uh, Brain Damage essentially being madness. It's, you know, you're being compelled by voices that are in your head that aren't your own. This distortion of reality, this uh, wrong interpretation of whatever it is that stimulus is coming through within your own receptors. Pure madness, uh, whether it's being the madness being brought to you by the media uh, through newspapers within the song, uh, or if it's through other means, you know, it's it's just going insane. Uh, and then finally, the, the eclipse being the total encapsulation of life. You know, it's everything under the sun eventually gets eclipsed by the moon. I mean, it's a full journey, you know, and I really, really do, do love how the music mirrors a lot of this, you know, with breathe and time being kind of this return to form within the you know that styling that they set out at the beginning of breathe uh on the run and uh any color you like being very experimental you know this is where they're using a lot of that loops and um you know the the production side of things in an artful way instead of just making the sound sound good they're actually using the production side of things to elevate the music around it can we just just Take a pause and talk about the vocal works that are found in Great Gig in the Sky. You know, like, I've, I still have not heard a live version of this song that even comes close to getting that studio recording of the singer. Like, it's so powerful. It's so emotive. Uh, I can't help but get moved by it. And I mean, I think the two big tracks of Time and Money being those big rockin' songs, like especially Money, like everybody knows that bass line and oh, that guitar work that is found on Money. You know, that big soaring, like David Gilmore guitar. Like, that was the one that really put him on the map. Like this was the one that made people pay attention. He had moments here and there on past albums like Fat Old Son from Adam Hart Mother. Um, you know, there was a couple moments on metal that had, you know, these really juicy um, guitar works. But really, it was Money that had that powerhouse rock and guitar that really set him apart from other guitarists at the time. Again, that massive crescendo at the end of Eclipse. Every single time I listen to it, I get moved. And even though I've memorized this album, I still get moved uh, with that. And tying the whole thing together, we have the heartbeat. You know, whether it be the heartbeat at the beginning and end uh, with Speak to Me and Eclipse, whether it be that heartbeat that's like heard at, within time, whether it be that heartbeat that's found really nestled within us and then, it's, it's that heartbeat that drives this album forward, and it's the, the human condition. It's the human experience, and really, it's what ties everything together, because it's the human experience. Uh, and yeah, I, I absolutely love how everything is tied together, and how they distilled the human experience within 10 tracks across, what, 40 minutes worth of music? It's a perfect album. You know, when I think about what makes an album perfect, I keep coming back to Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, and it's no wonder that it's one of the most popular albums ever. You know, when people think about popular rock music, this is one of the first albums that they, they you know, talk about. Uh, this is one that appealed to masses, and that's really, really hard to do for a progressive rock band. Outside the 70s, you know, like I know that the progressive rock movement's getting a little bit of a resurgence. Uh, I think more and more people are getting familiar with the progressive rock, but like this one transcended. You know, this was doing things that Lamb Lies Down on Broadway or Fragile or Aqualung could only dream about doing. You know, this one was like, I think, the longest consecutive album on the number one spot for the longest, longest time. And it, there's a very good reason for it. So, yeah, when I was thinking about doing a classic 
album review, this was one of the first ones that came up. And it was so hard for me to distill my thoughts about this record because of how much has already been said about it, about the production side of things, about the musicality on it within the concept. And I at least wanted to touch a little bit about that. But at the end of the day, it was the personal side of things. This was one of the first albums that I, I didn't feel alone when I listened to this record. You know, I felt myself in this record. And as a young individual, you know, coming into their own at the turn of the millennium, I was getting inundated with, you know, new metal and grunge and these types of musical styles that I will enjoy, but I didn't really see myself in. And Dark Side of the Moon was one of those first few records that I was just like, oh, that's it. That's what I have been feeling. Like all these other bands that have been attempting to put to stone what it's like as a human being on this earth. This was the one that really kind of hit me. Uh, and that was the reason why I, I kept coming back to it and kept coming back to it and kept coming back to it because I kept seeing myself uh, and I, I really felt connected to it. Uh, and, you know, it was with this, with Selling England by the Pound, with Trilogy from Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Those albums really allowed me to be more of myself uh, and that it was OK that I didn't necessarily connect with a lot of the contemporary music of the time. So, yeah, and it really does transcend time. You know, it's uh, kind of funny in that sense, but it does. You know, there's so much in this album that is still so relevant today. And that just goes to show of the brilliance of the writing and the compositions of these tracks. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know quite what else to say about Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, other than it's a full on masterpiece. And I can't think of anybody that hasn't heard of this album by now. But uh, I would love to hear what you think about this album. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's overhyped? Do you think it gets the amount of praise that it needs? Let me know about your own thoughts about this album by commenting down below. Because you know what? I think that's all I've got. Another one out of the way. So thank you all so much for watching. I've been having a blast with all these classic album reviews. Uh, it's great for me because I don't have to do a whole lot of prep work. I just have to spin it a couple of times. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're done. So yeah, let me know all of that. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.